uh, if you look at the next module that we have, that is module number three, this is in terms of virtual networking. So in the last session, we started about virtual networking. What are the options? What are the reasons for using virtual networking? What is the significance of virtual networks? Right? I mentioned aspects over here and I gave you an assignment. Do your assignments because when you do this assignment, you'll be able to learn and implement these things, right? Because implementation is also an important aspect of this certification paper. And even as part of your uh, day, on, day in day out jobs that we do, this will play a very, very, this hands on will play a very critical role, right? So let's get started. In terms of virtual networks, one of the primary aspects that I discussed last session was about address space, right? So whenever you are creating a resource like virtual network, how many IP addresses do you want over here, right? So that thing we have to mention. Within that address space, it will be easier and manageable by breaking it, breaking it up into number of subnets. So how many subnets do you want? And that's the reason why I mentioned about web subnet and DB subnet. Now, when you are creating this networking as a resource, virtual network as a resource, which is the region that you want to create this into, right? Because all other virtual machines will be in the same region where you have your virtual network, right? And these resources have to be part of a subscription. I also mentioned about the significance of why you should not have a overlapping address space why should you not cover entire virtual network address space right and i said as far as nsgs are concerned we'll come to nsgs in this session that is network security group but before we go to networks part of my assignment so first thing that we'll do is go to virtual networks one of the options available here let me create a virtual network here whatever name you want to give but before you create this virtual network you need to specify the resource group here whatever name you want right whatever region you want to mention over here so once you have mentioned these primary attributes we need to go ahead and specify the address space so here if you see this is the address space that we have 10.0.0.0 slash 60 now this address space has 65,000 above 65,000 addresses so you will have a larger address space within that you create your subnets. So by default, when we create our subnet, we, it has minimum of one subnet over here. Let me rename the existing one and give it a name as web subnet. Let me keep the range as it is 10.0.0.0 slash 24. So this will give you 256 IP addresses, right? Five of them are reserved. Five of them are reserved, and you have 251 usable IP addresses. So these five are for internal communications with the Azure platform. Along with this, let's add one more subnet over here as DB subnet. Let me specify the address space for this as well 10.0.1.0 slash 24. What we have done is we have broken up this into smaller address spaces. As far as security is concerned, I'll come to this section a bit later in terms of what is Bastion host, what is DDoS protection, firewall sol solutions. So these are in upcoming modules we'll do over there. As a meta information, 
you can specify the client name over here for which you are doing this session now this meta information or these tags will help you easily bifurcate we are doing this we are creating these resources for which client which department which project which environment right so we have got our address space created subnets we created over here let's move ahead now whenever you have subnets being created within each subnet you can create multiple virtual machines over here okay so once you look at these virtual networks these are foundations for your virtual machines so whatever ip addresses that we have created over here the range that we have mentioned over here all this range of ip addresses will be used to assign private ips to your virtual machines right so that's the core purpose of creating these subnets over here and once it comes to communication with internet this is this internal external communication is actually part of your network security group how you want to uh, communicate between the machines uh, between the vm and the outside world so if you look at this first point over here it says the outbound traffic is allowed by default now the question is who is allowing that that communication to happen okay so just let me give you a resource for that and that is possible through network security group so let's me create a network security group over here to show you how these things happen how the communication has been enabled let me keep the same resource group name as web energy as far as tags are concerned tags are optional so if you see this network security groups these are the ones which can be applied these are the ones which can be applied on the subnet level right this can also be applied this can be applied on subnet level this can be applied on NIC level. This NIC basically refers to network interface card. So you decide where you want to apply it. When you apply it on an NSG, it will be only for one machine. It will be only for one VM. Whereas if you apply it onto a subnet, this can be used for multiple units. Mul sorry, multiple VMs. Okay. So you decide where you want to apply these, apply this network security group. Now within this network security group, you'll have number of rules that you would want to create, right? So what is and as part of the rule, you can specify what is the source IP addresses, what is the destination IP addresses that people would want to connect to, right? Along with this, you'll have your resources over here. To which you want to which you want to specify here that is your port number you can specify your priority over here because you if you have number of rules what is the priority for each and every rule over here so you can mention that along with this you can also mention whether you want to allow that communication to happen or you want to deny that communication so these things we can mention over here as part of your that is network security group 
and while specifying the rules we can mention these things over here here if you see there are six rules by default and what we are referring to that is rule number 65001 allow internet outbound can you see this allow internet outbound it is by default enabled so if you see 65500 deny all outbound everything is stopped everything is closed by default deny all inbound so this is a larger value 65500 if you want to override these rules you'll have to create another rule which is having a lesser value lesser value in sense lesser value means higher priority lesser the value here which means higher the priority it will override the rules which is giving with a bigger number right bigger the number means lower the priority okay so here allow azure load balancer allow internet outbound allow virtual network outbound which means we need to be at communication so these are the things which are being allowed over here so now i hope this point should be clear outbound traffic is allowed by default so who allows that traffic who allows that communication that is the nsg now this inbound traffic is via two ways one is your public ip address and second is the load balancer so here if you see allow azure load balancer inbound so this values also are mentioned as part of your nsg right so depending upon the rules being mentioned this is the nsg rules will govern what is the kind of communication that is supposed to happen in case of uh, inbound traffic when you say public ip address this public IP address it will be a separate resource that we'll have to create. Just give me a moment. Let me take up our public IP address. So any external communication or open on open internet, if you want to have any communication, allow people to send their requests. In those scenarios, you'll be using public IP address. If you want to specify your DNS over here, let me take up an existing resource group. What is availability zone? I'll come to this a bit later. First, we discuss about high availability of virtual machines. So by default, once you're creating a public IP address, you can have two type of public IP addresses. One is static public IP address for which the IPs will not change, remain consistent or you can create a dynamic public IP address, which means while the resource is shut down, while the resource is not working, you don't, you don't have any IP address being assigned to it. Okay. So this is the public IP address which, being, which is being assigned over here and associated with a DNS. Okay, so what I was mentioning about this public IP address, we will come to public load balancer a bit later. Once we come to the load balancing section. Now, once it comes to communication between Azure resources, I can communicate using a virtual network. Right? I can communicate through virtual network to respect public IP addresses or private IP addresses which we have created. Right? Whenever the communication communication is happening across virtual network, it will happen via your private IP addresses or the local DNS being associated with the members. 
another member that you another aspect that you see over here is you can communicate via the service endpoints you can communicate via your private endpoints as well now this is between service to service communication this is between this is using service to service communication right another option that you have is you can communicate via vnet peering so what is this vnet peering we'll come to this in much more detail so Go what ahead. is a service to service communication uh, i mean what exactly uh, is it communicating with hmm. so this is service to service communication a storage account will be communicating or storage account will be using other set of resources an application will be communicating with storage account resources or database as a resource that is called a service to service communication actually okay. a service doesn't communicate it is a user's request which goes to a web application that web application would communicate to storage account it's that way to okay. fulfill a particular action or activity that you want to create like a dotnet connecting to sql server yes that's right the dot now in this scenario that you said dotnet application will be running onto a web application correct esp dotnet web application that web application will communicate to storage account or that web application will communicate to sql database so uh, this is all happening within azure but there will be scenarios where you would want to communicate between other members as well that is your on premises resources so there i can have point to side communication or i can have side to side communication okay now this is a very very important point and i will not be able to explain it if i don't use a diagram over here so till here what you see is a single virtual network within that i have two subnets if i want to segregate it further i can create another vnet as well and respective subnets within that say let me call it as vnet 1 this is vnet 2 right so if i want to enable communication between machines which are in both the environments what i need to do is i need to enable communication between these two machines by using vnet peering right or i can use vnet to vnet connectivity now we need to vnet connectivity this was the older one and when we were using vnet to vnet connectivity this was using something called as gateways vpn gateway okay this was using vnet gateways okay now something which i am not putting over here is within this vnet to also you will have respective subnets and you will have your machines inside that i'm not representing that it's understood now these virtual networks are on the azure environment what if i already have set of resources available within my on premises environment so you can create a bastion host users also right you can create a bastion host also i am not getting into bastion right now because bastion is more in terms of enabling the rdp connectivity ssh connectivity and bastion subnet will be inside the same virtual network so it is not connectivity across virtual networks okay now inside the subnet right right yeah not across yes. yeah yes right yeah that's why i'm not mentioning that over here yeah, yeah you're right if it is inside the uh, vnet 1 then yes not vnet 1 to vnet 2 correct correct so here uh, put details on this this is my on premises vnet right within my on premises vnet i will have my respective on premises uh, subnets and respective machines over there 
So when I want to have connectivity between my Azure environment and my on-premises resources, here what I'll do is I'll create something called a site-to-site -site connectivity. Right? I can use site-to-site -site connectivity or I can use something called as express route. So these are the options available for VNet to VNet connectivity when it is across two environments. If there is a single machine over here, there's a laptop machine or a desktop machine. Right? If I have a single system over here for a single machine, I can make use of on to site connectivity. I can make use of on to site connectivity. Okay, so I hope diagrammatically. Okay, just give me a moment. This will be single desktop or laptop and on this machine what I what we need to install will be a VPN client. So through this VPN client we will be able to communicate with our Azure virtual network. So these two resources VNet1, VNet2 these are a part of Azure. This is my on-premises virtual network. This is my external laptop or desktop machine which is trying to connect to Azure resources. So is this part clear to everyone? What are the options for communication? It will be same for uh, on-premise VNet also, right? Point to site. No, no. Point to site, why do you need for on-premise VNet? Oh, I'm already in the network. That The naming convention is not point to site, but yes, the implementation wise, it is the same thing. On even if uh, somebody is working from home and they are trying to connect to on-premises VNet, you will have a VPN connectivity. Correct. Okay. And what you need to install is a VPN client. So that way you are, if you are saying it's correct, but the name, the term is not point to site. Okay, VPN. Okay. Now it's a VPN, it's called a VPN client. Okay. This term point to site came into existence when it, it was connectivity from uh, connected to Azure environment. Okay, so this is what I was trying to showcase. What is point to site? What is site to site? And what is Azure Express route? Azure Express route is a separate service altogether for passing huge amount of data from your on-premises environment to your Azure environment. Okay, so if you look at your virtual networking, I already mentioned about the options available. So once it comes to your virtual networking for filtering your network traffic, which which of the IP addresses are or uh, which of the source IP addresses can communicate with which of the destination IP addresses, all those things will be part of your network security group. Okay, so here why we were creating network security group. We saw the options there which were predefined rules, but we did not look at what are the rules that we want to create. So here let me go to inbound security rules. Right, so if you look at the source options, you have IP addresses service tag application security group so what is the source where the request is coming from secondly if you know that this source will be sending a request by using a specific port you can enable that port as well in terms of but this is more from the client's perspective the source ip address is the, where the request is coming from from the client perspective this is what we have with us that is in terms of destination. So in terms of destination, what is the IP addresses that you would want, virtual network that you would want, 
right application security group that you want to create over here along with this what is the port that you would want to enable over here for communication i should not mention about the service so these are the services which you will be communicating with redis cache cassandra mongo rdp ssh http https sql connectivity so what is the kind of connectivity that you would want from your environment over here now since this is web nsg let me open http port over here allow let me give it a name as allow http priority 100 from client's perspective i don't have a problem any source any port i'm okay with it destination any service http let me do a add over here let me create one more rule source any destination any service https allow so whichever resources you want to allow communications for let me open one more service rdp because i will be creating windows machines over here priority 120 allow rdp so you realize i am making these uh, provisions before creating the virtual machine and generally in real world scenarios how it happens is this will be something which is done by the networking team okay all these actions that i am doing will be done by the networking team and the server team will go and well the server team is creating the vm they will utilize these resources okay so if you look at uh, network security groups this is what i was mentioning about significance of network security group and how do you create a rules over here for your environment apart from this you can also have something called as network virtual appliances now what are these network virtual appliances nva so we, uh, as we call them what is the purpose of this now before these communications happen with the relevant machines or relevant subnet i would want to filter it through a firewall right whether we want to allow that communication to happen or we don't allow want to allow that communication to happen so filtering of incoming request and filtering of outgoing responses those things we can do by using network virtual appliances generally these network uh, these network virtual appliances will be as your proxy server or and uh, using that proxy server you may also go ahead and implement a firewall because you need to keep an eye on what is going out what is coming in which of these in, in case i want to block some kind of communications right so those kind of actions i can take only when i'm filtering that network traffic and that is the core purpose of network virtual appliances now the question over here is once it comes to any of your communications like i said in the previous communication so i can i can enable vnet to vnet communication by using vnet peering i can easily do subnet to subnet communication which is machine inside this work, uh, machine inside this subnet can easily communicate with machine in another subnet right so machine to machine communication across subnets machine to question communication across virtual networks within azure by using vnet peering right machine to machine communication between between two vms which are across environments on premises and azure so if i want to uh, change that process by saying that before it goes to db subnet it has to go to the third subnet that is containing the firewall 
so how we are you going to do that so how are you going to change or disrupt disrupt the system routing or a default routing process if you want to disrupt that or you if you want to change that you will have to create your own custom routing which is called as user defined routing so using this option of user defined routing we can specify the change in this process saying that i don't want you to follow the system route instead go to a user defined route and through this user defined route we will create a routing table and within that routing table we will create our respective routes over here that is your bgp routes now using this routes we will be able to specify that any communication going to front end subnet any communication going to front end subnet should be stopped it should be first taken to the virtual appliance from that virtual appliance firewall we will verify and then it will go to front end subnet same thing holds true for your database as well so in terms of your back end subnet here what we would want to do is it should be first since back end or a database is a most critical resource we would want to make sure it first gets filtered over here we will verify that everything is appropriate and then we will send this request to the database submit does it make sense to everyone can you can you go over again please once okay yeah b before that like uh, huh. looks like uh, the both the jobs are the same right is it yes. is it yes. something is it something like third party firewall like checkpoint okay. or something uh, yes, yes. we use oh okay very valid point and uh, very rightly mentioned when you say network of virtual network virtual appliance like i said it could be a proxy it could be a third parties uh, third party resource that you are creating or it could be azure firewall service also so what microsoft has done is microsoft has given you a pre existing service microsoft managed service called as firewall azure firewall the vm which gets created is managed by microsoft itself you don't have to create that so microsoft will give you give to you as a service right so second option which i said is you can make use of azure firewall so let me go to azure.com once again and here let me go to networking within networking i have azure firewall so if you don't have a pre existing resource you may want to evaluate if i have an option given by azure so you have two options or two tiers over here one is azure firewall standard and firewall premium right so depending upon your requirement you can make use of azure firewall as a service you can configure it over here within your environment do you have a entire end to end solution over here how this entire thing will work so how do you go ahead create your firewall subnet over here how do you create your firewall service given by azure within your subnet and that will help you to protect your underlying environment the workload that you are creating over here if you look at the steps over here right so how should you create the steps and what will be the options over here all those members are being all those steps have been specified let me share this url with you all so in case you want to sorry i think this is Thank <laughs> you.
not reaching to everyone. Okay, are you able to see the resource, uh, see the URLs now? I can connect, uh, see your chat window? Yeah, I can. Okay. So what I was mentioning about over here is the significance of network, sec uh, network security groups, significance of network virtual appliances, right? So Azure firewall that you see is a network virtual appliance, right? So here you can go ahead and create your routing table to change the default behavior of the Azure environment, which means no direct communication to front end subnet, no direct communication to back end subnet. Everything has to go via a network virtual appliance. Okay, let's proceed further. To the next member. The next member over here is virtual network peering and VPN gateways. I don't know why this comparison should come over here. This comparison should come later because by now we have not discussed about what is VNet peering and how do you do this VNet peering. This should come later. <clears throat> so this is where I'll, I'll stop in terms of virtual network environment and discussion on user defined routing. User defined routing, I hope everybody is clear with it by now. And once it comes to user defined routing, User defined routing is external communication. And when we are doing this external communication, how do you enable communications between subnets? Like I said earlier, it's by default enabled. So if you want to change that process, if you want to change the default behavior, you need to create a custom routing over here. And I have also shared a URL with you all where you all can do these steps on your own. So these are like lamps. So when you look at these tutorials, these are like labs within your environment, how to create a subnet, how to create a, sorry, how to create a VNet, how to create a subnet inside that, how do you create a firewall, right? What are the options for creating a default route over here? So these are the options which are step-by-step -step details given to you, which I'll should try out. Now one, uh, one, Thing which is very very critical for everybody once you have done with your tutorials once you have done with your lab right make sure you delete all the resources don't leave out any resource whether it is virtual network or storage account or virtual machine delete all the resources right because every resource like i have mentioned earlier has a cost with itself right so once you have practiced these things you have understood how this entire thing works Make sure you delete the resources. Clear everyone? So this will be the assignment for you all. How to create a firewall subnet? How do you create a workload subnet? How do you create your firewall resource over here and enable communication with your workload? Okay, so please do the do your assignment without fail.